In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to those of you who are here for the first time, or are visitors. It's very good to welcome you this evening. Today is, of course, Stir Up Sunday, the reason for which will become apparent at the end of the service in the post-communion prayer. However, it's also the annual reminder, if you haven't already, to make your Christmas puddings. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O, o King, King enthroned on high, high, filling the earth with, with your glory, holy, holy is your name, your name Lord, Lord God Almighty. Almighty. In, In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our, our guilt away, away and, and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our reading is from the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, his throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingdom is one that shall never be destroyed. Here ends our reading. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So, you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Thank God this country has a queen, because a little tour through the history of the kings of the world 
shows us a generally grand panorama of misrule. Here are a few selected reigns. Close to home, Richard II reigned from 1377 to 1399, as English school children still study, yes? While striving to exalt the notion of kingship and himself as king, he alienated the nobility by gathering a small group of favorites around himself. He exiled or killed those nobles who opposed him, leading to his deposition and death at the age of 33. We go on to the rightly named Ivan the Terrible of Russia, who reigned from 1547 to 1584. He consolidated his own power at an immense cost to his own people. He crushed the nobles, confiscating their lands to give to his own followers, condemning millions to a permanent state of wretched serfdom. Among other acts, distrusting the city of Novgorod, he had it violently sacked and its inhabitants massacred. His paranoia, rage, and episodic outbreaks of mental instability increased with age. In one fit of anger, he murdered his eldest son and heir, causing the miscarriage of the latter's unborn child. We come to King Leopold II of Belgium. He carved out the incongruously named Congo Free State and ran it as his own personal fiefdom from 1885 to 1908. It was a slave state in which he plundered the riches of the Congo's copper, ivory, and rubber, extracting a fortune. His administration was characterized by atrocities, including torture and murder, resulting from notorious systematic brutality, a reign of terror. The hands of men, women, and children were amputated when the quota of rubber was not met. Perhaps 10 million Congolese died. These may be a few of the most outstanding examples of misrule by kings, but I'd like you to try to immediately call to mind as many examples of benevolent rulers who cared for their own people and whose principal aim was their greater welfare. Excluded have to be Elizabeth, Victoria, and Elizabeth. What about kingship in the time of Jesus? Augustus had seized power after the assassination of Julius Caesar, ruthlessly consolidating that power in the years that followed. Tiberius then reigned, a dark and reclusive emperor who promoted the cult of the divinity of Augustus throughout the lands of the empire. Tiberius was succeeded as emperor by Caligula, whose brief four-year reign from 37 to 41 was marked by arbitrary arrest for treason, acts of incest with his sisters, and other sexual debauchery. He worked to increase the unconstrained personal power of the emperor, directing much of his attention to ambitious construction projects and luxurious dwellings for himself. So much for kings. They have so often through history misused their power, enriching themselves and their families at the expense of the people with whose welfare they have been entrusted. What kind of king were Jesus's fellow citizens hoping for with this kind of backdrop? I imagine that their expectations were not particularly high. But they felt the oppression of Rome's king, and they remembered their own king, David. It had been a thousand years since his reign, and he was a flawed king, but he had been chosen by God to be their king. It was their golden age. The people were longing for another David, a military man, a ruler of might and power, who would restore the glory in their land. 
So Jesus appears, and he lives his life for the three short years of his public ministry, traveling dusty roads and preaching a very different kind of kingdom from the one the people knew, the rule of Rome. He called it the kingdom of God. How were they supposed to understand this kind of kingdom? One clue was by the way Jesus lived it out, including the poor and the outcasts, healing those who were sick, teaching a gospel of kindness, compassion, and love. He tried to describe the kingdom for them in parables, but even his own closest followers didn't really understand what he meant by them. When he had been arrested near the end of his short life, John narrates this curious exchange between Jesus and Pilate. It is a famous exchange. Pilate questions Jesus, but Jesus refuses to answer the questions that Pilate asks. Listen to what is asked and what is not answered. Pilate asks, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answers, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replies, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answers, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asks, so you are a king? Jesus answers, you say that I am a king. Pilate is left to draw his own conclusions. This is an enigmatic confrontation. Pilate wants Jesus to answer in this way. Yes, I set myself up to be a king in opposition to Rome's emperor. I presume this indeed. You can put me in this category, yes. If Jesus had replied with these words, Pilate could have cleared the whole mess up in a few minutes and gotten it off his conscience. But the unsatisfactory exchange continues. Jesus says, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. And what our reading for today leaves off deliberately is the final verse, the final question of Pilate to Jesus. What is truth? And Jesus does not answer. Jesus' life did not have a fairy tale ending because it is not a fairy tale world. The truth of the kind of king Jesus was and is cannot be described in a question and answer format with Pilate or on a television talk show. It cannot be contained even in a creed. With Jesus, it was always about showing what the kingdom of God is like. It is like a loving father embracing a prodigal son, a good passerby who helps a wounded traveler, a good shepherd, a poor woman who gives all she has. Maybe we can understand these likenesses, but we also have the life itself, the truth that Jesus' life itself embodied. After the prayers we offer for ourselves and for others, we hear the words of the Eucharist. Listen carefully to the kind of kingship these Eucharistic words describe. Christ offered himself once for all upon the altar of the cross and redeemed the human race by this perfect sacrifice of peace. As king, he claims dominion over all your creatures that he may bring before your infinite majesty a kingdom of truth and life 
a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. An offering of himself for the purpose of bringing to this fractured and damaged earth a kingdom of God's own rule, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. What are the qualities of the kind of king we are asked to worship and adore? Humility, mercy, devotion to the ones who are least and last. So that, through this offering of himself, God's vision for a redeemed humanity might be realized. It is right to offer him our thanks and praise. May we lift up our voices in praise and honor to this kind of king. Amen. And so we stand to declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let us pray. Let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. We pray for all those in positions of power that they may govern with wisdom and integrity serving the needs of their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for this community of faith, that attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in any kind of trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, amongst whom are Rose Anderson, John Burbage, Bunny Priestley, Alex Taylor, Maurizio, Jean Locke, Aaron Cook, John Bartlett, Jill Trainer, and Angus Sterling. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We rejoice with those who have been called into your kingly presence and amongst the recently departed, Ray Von Drela, and those whose years mind falls at this time, Jeffrey Dedeni, Susie Townsend, Min Nugen, and Jean Sewell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We join our prayers with those of all the saints on heaven and earth and pray with Mary, the Mother of God. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou among women, women and, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners Jesus. now and, and at the hour of our Father. death. Amen. Please stand for the peace. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and outpoured wine may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. of all life. Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St John the Baptist, St George and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Everyone is welcome to come and join in this feast if you so wish. Alternatively, please do feel free to come forward and receive a blessing. For behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be thee.
let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please be seated for the notice. First of all, thanks to Colin, who is standing in as our organist this evening. Thank you for coming and joining us. Um, Mark should be back with us next week as normal. Um, notices, most of the notices are in the back of the service sheet. If I can draw your attention to one or two. On Tuesday morning, we're meeting at St George's at 10, 10 o'clock um, for coffee and cake. There is an ulterior motive which is that we need to get together the Christmas mailing um, to drop through letterboxes around here. If you're able to come, it's usually a convivial morning um, and your help will be appreciated. Um, there's a youth event on Friday at St George's for secondary school children. Um, if you know of anybody that would like to come to that, can you have a word with Dana, please? Um, and also, on the 9th, Thursday the 9th of December, um, our, we got a choir coming to sing, amongst other things, Benjamin Britten's A Ceremony of Carols, together with C Cecily Beer, who is a, an excellent harpist who was here with us last year. Um, St John's, along with many other churches, has suffered a major fall in its income, and this is a fundraising concert, um, and tickets are priced at £20 and £15 for concessions, and are either available from Eventbrite or via the office. Um, if you can come, and please do, and if you can tell others about it, please do. It's going to be a really spectacular concert. Other than that, our own carol service is the following Sunday the 12th. Um, as always, that is a wonderful occasion, and the choir is practicing already. Have I missed anything I ought to have said? No. Other than to say the reason that, if you hadn't guessed, the reason this is Stir Up Sunday is that the collect that we had for the post-communion prayer is the main collect for this Sunday in the Book of Common Prayer um, and prompts people to make their Christmas puddings if they haven't already. Can I invite you to stand for the blessing? And I forgot one other notice, which is, if you are able, please do join us at the end of the service for a glass of something soft or white. The Lord be with you. Christ, our exalted King, pour upon you his abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this night and forevermore. <laughs>